Time for something new today. In front of us here is a sample of nylon filament. This is Tallman's Nylon Bridge 3D Printer Filament. Why would you want to print in nylon? Well, nylon is much stronger than a PLA or even an ABS filament. If you need to print super strong uh, mechanical uh, stressed parts with your 3D printer, then nylon is the way to go. Looking at this sample in front of us, we can see that the colour is a natural colour. It also is uh, semi-transparent, as you can see. The texture of this nylon is also quite smooth. There's no roughness at all to that. And also the strength of this filament, comparing it to like a PLA, where a PLA is quite stiff and brittle, this, uh, this nylon uh, has a bit of flex to it. Uh, it's more flexible than uh, ABS as well. And straight away, uh, I can tell, as soon as I start to bend this filament, I'm feeling a lot of resistance there. It does not want to continue to bend. And when I let go, it's happy to, you know, spring back to almost its original shape. So straight away, I've got plenty of confidence with this material that it's going to be a hell of a lot stronger than PLA, of course, and also an ABS. As this is just a sample, it didn't come wound on a spool, so I'll probably be feeding this in by hand during the test print. However, if you do buy an entire roll of this, of course, it'll come on a spool. Okay, we can feed this into the Bowden extruder. Feeds in nice and easy, of course. I have the hot end preheated to 245 degrees Celsius, which is the, uh, the bottom of the range of the printing temperature of this filament. I'll pass that through the E3D hot end. Feed some down until we can see some filament. There we go. And push down the PTFE tube. And feed through some filament. Unfortunately, I've had to stop this print halfway through because I realized when I sliced this part with slicer I left the default extrusion width at zero and for some reason with uh, the newer version of slicer It seems to want to extrude uh, with gaps in between some of the perimeters and between the perimeters and the infill and so on So that's going to affect the strength of this part So I think I'll just cut my losses here and I'll start this one again after I've uh, sliced it properly and this is what I'm talking about. This is in Prontoface and just looking at the, uh, the print moves or the tool paths, you can see these gaps um, between the perimeters. That, that's just how it's been sliced with Slicer. And also between you know, the, this, this third inner perimeter and the two outer ones is a, quite a large gap. And also just around where the motor would mount to this, uh, to this quadcopter arm, it's decided to, to you know, place a gap here and make that last perimeter like a little island, which um, obviously isn't going to work out too well. And if I just move down this piece, you can see the gaps, uh, they're everywhere. So I'll slice this again, and let's have a look at the difference. And here is the culprit under print settings, default extrusion width. I'll change it from the default of 0 to 0.4. Let's slice this again and see what it looks like. 
So here's that same part again, sliced this time with the extru extrusion width multiplier set to 0.4, which is the same as my uh, nozzle. And you can instantly see the perimeters are solid. They are butted up next to each other. We can also see around where the motor would um, connect to this quadcopter arm, there's, there's no island in the center here. The infill goes all the way around. So this part here is going to be a lot stronger. And as we move down the part, you can see, you know, it's solid. Every perimeter is solid. So hopefully uh, this prints with more success. And here is the Pion 230 quadcopter arm successfully printed in nylon bridge. I was quite impressed with this material. Uh, at first I wasn't sure what to expect if I was going to come across extrusion issues or uh, bed adhesion issues, but no, it seemed to print first go, which was great to see. Um, I printed this at 245 degrees Celsius. Uh, the bed was set to 45 degrees Celsius and no fans were blowing on this part while it was printing. Uh, the slicer settings for this part were three perimeters, three top and bottom layers with a 50% infill. The advantages of printing with this nylon bridge material is, first of all, it's stuck down on blue painter's tape without an issue. Uh, it didn't bow at, at, at any point and it was easy to remove once the bed had cooled down. Uh, also, it's virtually odourless when printing this material. I was worried with the nylon if it was going to release, you know, some, some toxic gases or fumes or whatnot, but uh, no, no, it was virtually odourless. I still uh, had a window open though, just in case, but um, I don't think that's going to be much of an issue with, with this material. Uh, and also, it printed successfully at 245 degrees, so that means that you don't need uh, an all-metal hot end uh, to print with this material because most hot ends can reach up to you know, the 245 degree mark without um, causing any issues. So this material should be uh, compatible with pretty much every uh, print head that is out there. Now to the disadvantages with this nylon bridge material and the big disadvantage for me, um, disappointing actually, is I printed the Pion 230 quadcopter arm because this is a great candidate for uh, the strength of the nylon, which is what I wanted for a, for a quadcopter frame. However, as you'll see in a second, it's flexible. I can I can bend that with my hands and yeah, it'll spring back, but that's obviously not going to work on a quadcopter. Uh, when the you know the motor creates thrust, the arm's just going to bend or whatnot, and so and also when you're changing directions quite fast, you might receive flex and vibration will occur throughout throughout the uh, throughout the frame. So unfortunately, I can't recommend this nylon bridge uh, for a uh, for a quadcopter frame which is a real shame. Uh, the, the other disadvantage I noticed with this was it was oozing just a little, little bit more than what a PLA or ABS filament would ooze. Now normally if you experience oozing, or for me anyway, I would either drop the temperature uh, of the hot end while, while printing. However, I was printing this at 245 degrees Celsius, which is the lowest recommended temperature. So I'm not sure if I can go lower than that and still extrude um, this filament. Uh, and also I was, I had the, re, the retraction settings quite aggressive. I was retracting at three millimeters at 150 millimeters a second, and it was still oozing. The, those, those settings are my go-to settings um, for other filaments, and it seems to to mitigate any oozing, but it didn't with this with this nylon bridge. So that uh, that was disappointing to see. Uh, and lastly, um, I guess just something minor is I noticed there was quite a bit of hissing and popping while this filament um, was printing. So the sample that I had, I guess, must have absorbed quite a bit of moisture um, when it was sitting around. So I guess this nylon material is susceptible to um, uh, to moisture uh, ingress more so than I guess uh, other material. Well, seeing as I'm not going to use it on the quadcopter, I might as well give it the bend test and let's see if we can break it. Okay, well we know it can bend, so I guess we just keep bending until it breaks. 
Let's give it a go. Will it break? It'll bend. No issues with bending. Doesn't want to break. Look at that. I've bent it right back on itself. Will it go back to shape? Not by itself. Well, let's bend it the other way then. Well, it's official. Nylon is, well, this nylon bridge is very strong. There's, there's no doubting, you know, the strength of the nylon. It hasn't, um, it hasn't broken as such or snapped or shattered or, or torn or whatnot. But um, it's, it's just a little bit uh, uh, flexible. That's its only downside that I can come up with. I guess the alternative is to reprint this quadcopter arm as a solid piece. That is, have the infill at 100%. Uh, however, I don't have enough of the sample left to do that, and also because this is still quite flexible, even at 50% uh, infill, I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, totally rigid at 100. I still think there'll be some flex there, uh, but not to worry. Just having a look on the uh, the Tolman website, they have some other nylon material with um, less elongation, I guess they they call it, which which I guess is the the flexibility that that we're we're looking at here. So. I might grab another sample for another video of either the uh, Alloy 910 or the Nylon 618.